the operator, the, the leasing company replaces with an another aircraft. When you have a dry lease, you do not have that leeway. When you are doing a back-to-back -back with two aircrafts, it's always good to take a support from someone which can give you an aircraft in lieu of an aircraft if you are thing. When you have a big fleet, then you can do a tail swap. But when you have a small fleet, this is, I think, the best model to go about. Most of the people are doing that. So when they go more, more than 10 aircrafts, that's the time you see that slowly they're getting into the dry lease model. See, now everything comes at a premium. If you're going on a wet lease, you are shedding off a lot of liabilities to someone else. So there is a premium. You know, whenever the, the liability goes up, there's always a premium you pay. So maybe they're pay, paying a bit more extra, but they're safeguarding the operations on a day-to-day. -day. Because when you have passengers booked in and the aircraft has a problem, those passengers are going to be inconvenient. So this is the best way to protect that. Even airlines like Emirates, they take uh, aircrafts on lease. They don't own it because uh, they know end of uh, what do you do with the aircraft after, let's say, five years, seven years, ten years down the line. Because when you, when you want to get rid of them, you have uh, depreciated the machine to that level when then you look for people. So it's always do, good to have a partner with a leasing company. It's less liability to you. And you know you're getting your configuration, whatever you want. Secondly, all the leasing companies are getting it from the manufacturers. So, and if you have a tie-up, you can get the number of aircrafts you want at any given point of time. So you don't have to wait in queue and decide on, on that. See, uh, you know that the, there was a company, uh, airline by the name Enrique, which operated eight months into there. There are always, whenever a, a local airline operates, starts the operation, there are two parts of it. The first is, uh, there is always a nostalgic uh, feeling for the people in Nigeria that they will use their own airline, okay? Emirates, people use when they have that the passengers transit out of Dubai and they have an onward connectivity. Medview would also get into that stage when they have uh, interlines with others, where they have also connectivity in there. Today, when you come to the uh, you know, uh, uh, conveyor thing for, to collect your baggage and you look back, most of the passengers are transit. That means they are, the connectivity is it's onwards. When you want to come into Dubai and go back, uh, then the choice is yours whether I want to use an airline A or an airline B. That's the choice because Medview at the moment is operating a point-to-point. -point. So people would definitely, fares is a competitive factor. The, the on-time performance is also a big, big factor. In-flight services is a big factor. And uh, customer care end of the day is also there. So I'm hoping that if everything is adhered to and the aircraft is safe and everything, more people in days to come would prefer, prefer and carrier which belongs to the Put, put the for the country. The French president and Qatar Emir arriving at a news conference. France and Qatar have signed commercial contracts worth around 12 billion euros to show the strength of the economic ties. Qatar has agreed to buy 12 more Rafale fighter planes from Dassault Aviation and will employ France Suisse to dredge and clean Qatar's lagoon and has also retained two French companies to build and operate a metro system in Qatar. We also signed a certain number of commercial deals reflecting the strength of our economic ties, deals in the defense industry, an important deal in the arms industry, a highly anticipated deal for the exploitation and maintenance of the metro in Doha and the tramway in Losai, equally important deals for dealing with soil pollution. In total, an amount close to 12 billion euros has been signed today. With occasional cancelled flights, long queues and tight seats, modern day airline is hardly comfortable to say the least. But one artist is out to take our passengers in a flight of fancy. Here at the Tartabro Airport in New Jersey, a new airline is about to take off on its maiden flight, and they say it's going to be a state-of-art experience.
Angel Aha Airline is the brainchild of Chinese artist Qiumin Liu. The project that Liu says is performance art in itself has been two years in the making. Basically, when you see the news about Angel Haha, you already entered my performance. So entire thing, um, it's been choreographed. So uh, of course, my airline is different. My airline is about art. It will bring the most positive energy to every passenger. Liu commissioned this private jet to take a handful of passengers to the annual Arts Basel Fair in Miami. Inside, they are entertained by Liu for the duration of the flight. Liu has more flights scheduled to arts destinations around the world and hopes to own her own dedicated Angel Aha airline aircraft in the future. It's a service, it's a performance. So basically, um, I'm the flight attendant, so I'm going to serve my people. I'm going to create a choreograph, an environment to my passengers. We fly to art, never come back. Fly with Angel Haha, fly with happiness. That's the spirit. But with passengers shelling out $3,500 for this flight to Miami, it seems that Angel Aha is just reserved for the jet-setting arts collectors for now. When we return after the break, catch the sights and sounds as Medview Airlines makes its incursion into the city of Dubai.